and you stalled and you went, oh no. Right, handbrake, neutral. Hi there, and welcome to part two of Driving Misconceptions. You've been asked to do a reverse bay park in a driving test, and you decide to use the 90 degree parking method. But the problem with this technique is that often, as you may realise and have found, it doesn't often have consistency. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let's say maybe you overshoot it a bit like that, and then you end up here. And then you can't go back anymore. And you check, you open your door to have a look, and you're not in the lines. Many people think that's a fail because you've not got into the parking space straight away. But you are allowed, so I'll go into neutral, stop the beeping, it's just because there's a bush behind me. But you are allowed to adjust the parking by going forward. So I'm going to do that now. But just make sure you do your checks before you pull forward. So a lot of people rush because they panic, they didn't go right first time, and then they rush forwards without checking. If you went forwards without checking, that could be a big problem. In particular course, there's a car coming, and the examiner had to stop you, that would most definitely be a fail. So do your checks. Do some corrections. And then... Do your checks and reverse back into the space using your mirrors to judge where the lines are. You can lean up like I'm here to help you to see better. And then, now this time you're in, you're in between the lines. So you can open your door, just have a final check. When doing parking as well, people often struggle because they can't see the lines. And then people ask me, am I allowed to move the mirrors down? And yes, you are. So you can use the electric mirror control to dip the mirrors down so you can see the lines and also see the rear wheels of the car. So if you angle the mirrors in, you should be able to see the rear wheels of your car. And it should then be a lot easier. But of course, if you do dip the mirrors down, you must not stare in them must still be checking round. You can always stop and then have a good look in your mirrors, that's fine. And then have another good look round and then you can continue to reverse back. If you stared in your mirrors, then that could be a fail. But just dipping them down and then keeping an eye on elsewhere, looking in your blind spots, would be acceptable. One of the main disadvantages of dipping mirrors down you must remember to move them back up once you've finished. Now, if you do forget to move them back up, it's not a huge problem, it won't be an immediate fail. Find a safe place to stop after you've driven off and then readjust them. If you left them dipped down and you drove for a good 10 minutes, then you could have problems because maybe you need to do a lane change and you can't see what's next to you. That's going to be a big problem. But if you can adjust them, just a few seconds after you drive off, just find someone to pull up and adjust them that's fine they're not gonna they're not gonna worry about them. they're not gonna fail you for that oh stalling is that a fail a lot of people think it is but no it's not stalling is not necessarily a fail it depends on the circumstances and how you recover from it for example stalling here it's quite road I'm parked up to the side of the road no danger whatsoever. I'm not delaying anyone either because I'm parked up at the side of the road. So if you stall and you take 30 seconds or so to get going again, you're not going to get fail for that. You'll get a minor for it, but you're not going to fail for it. Imagine you're at a traffic light. The light's just gone green. And you stalled and you went, oh no. Right, handbrake, neutral. That would probably be a fail. It could be a fail, as by the time we got restarted, the light could have gone to red. So you've missed a whole sequence of traffic lights 
delaying the cars behind you. How should we recover from a stall? In essence, we want to recover like a driver, not like a learner. If you watched other people drive, they probably don't go handbrake neutral every time it stalls. So we don't want to be doing that either. Oh, so you've stalled. Just clutch down, restart, redo your checks, and off you go. So we don't just go into neutral, as long as we're in the correct gear. If we stalled because we're in third gear, you need to obviously change that gear before restarting. Um, we don't split the handbrake on in that situation because the road was flat. If, however, it was on a hill, then putting the handbrake on would be a good idea to stop yourself rolling back. So the examiner asks you to pull up on the left. I'm doing the quiet car park here for the sake of this video. And then, oh, fail. You didn't push the button on the handbrake. Or at the very least, you're going to get marked down for that, surely. No, you're not. Not pushing the button in isn't a big deal. They don't mark on the UK driving test. Um, in fact, if you watch the video, um, a video by Engineering Explained, it also confirms it doesn't cause any damage to the handbrake. So it's not a big deal if you don't push the button in. Don't worry about that one. Try to push the button if you can. The only real benefit of pushing the button in, it just stops the handbrake making a funny noise. So, and then with, without the button, you just get that noise. So it depends if that noise annoys you or not, or whether you like that noise. Do you need to change gears sequentially? So one at a time. So for example, here I'm in gear three. Do I have to always go to gear four? No, you can sometimes skip straight to gear five. You might do that if you're building speed rapidly. Block changing gears is more common though when you're slowing down. So for example here I'm in gear 5, I'm using my brakes to slow, I'm not pressing the clutch down yet. Scan to the right, clutch down, gear 2, and off I go. Here's how it would look changing down gear sequentially. So I'm in 5, 4, 3, 2, and then I'm safe to go. It seems an awful lot of work for your gears, doesn't it? Changing one gear at a time. You typically won't fail for doing your gears like that, but the examiner probably will have a word for you at the end of the test, wondering why you're doing the gears like that, and saying you need to work on using your gears better. I believe the misconception of changing gears one by one comes from the olden days, when old cars, like vintage cars, talking about cars that are 50 years older or more, you have to change gears one by one, but on a modern gearbox, you can skip gears. And I think over the years, it's just filtered through that you have to change gears one by one. And I hope the main thing you took from this video is things are not black and white when it comes to the marking system on the UK driving test. It very much depends on the circumstances, how you deal with it, and the examiner's discretion.